All right, everybody. I am in Enid, Oklahoma. Pretty good sized city up here in northern central Oklahoma. I'm in front of the Garfield County Courthouse. Beautiful building. In fact, this whole downtown is surprising me a little bit. It is really nice here and it's vibrant. Lots of cars, a lot of people. You don't see too many walking around now because it's freaking 25 degrees at 10 a.m. on a Friday here in the, oh, I guess we're in the middle of November. Anyway, I've already wandered around downtown a little bit. I uh, got a drone shot. I'll show you that in a second. And uh, I like what I'm seeing. I honestly didn't expect much for Enid, but I thought we'd come out here anyway. You know, I'm gonna try to hit every town 50,000 population and above. Enid, in 2021, has 51,694. So here I am. The Statue of Liberty here. Uh, and it's not unimpressive. I really like it. Now, where does the name Enid come from? You might be, you're, you know, my lips are cold. That's why I'm having a tough time talking. <laughs> you might be wondering, I did, where the name came from. It comes from Lord Alfred Tennyson's epic poem about King Arthur. Uh, and it's called Idols of the King. And of course, Enid was a character in that. Uh, she was the wife of one of the characters. Interesting that they name a city in Oklahoma after a, what, <laughs> King Arthur poem. Anyway, I found that really interesting. But anyway, before I go any farther, uh, let's see that drone shot so you can see what the city looks like from the air. I'm here looking at this statue. It's entitled Keeper of the Plains. A lone Indian proudly stands holding the articles of peace, thoughtful and serene. He is the Keeper of the Plains. I like that. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about Enid. Some of it may surprise you. Vance Air Force Base is nearby. I was on my way out of town. It's south of the city and uh, drove by there and man there's a lot of jets just i don't know what the term would be scatting they're just flying over the countryside like crazy maniacs uh, glaze was in my eyes because i would love to do that i'm checking out this cool uh, clock tower here on the county courthouse building uh, anyway i will continue on about enid the city uh, the city's economy is powered mostly through agriculture and oil production, energy, no surprising this is Oklahoma as far as oil is concerned, but you really see it driving into town, and I'm talking about agri uh, agriculture, you really see that coming into town because of the huge grain elevators that are in the city. As we approach them from the distance, I thought they were a city skyline, uh, they're really tall, but no. Grain elevator capacity here is among the largest in the world. One of the three largest in the world. Uh, at times, the largest in the world. So, um, agriculture is big time out here. A lot of farms around here. Interestingly, no interstate runs through or near Enid. 
A um, couple of other things. Enid produces more Philly cheesesteak sandwiches than any other place in the world. That includes Philadelphia. And the reason for that is they have a huge food conglomerate here called uh, Advanced Pierre Food. This company also produces the most school lunches in the United States. So a little thing, cool fact about Enid. I really like this section of downtown. Nicely developed. All occupied storefronts. So I'm not really seeing empty uh, buildings here. You see that sometimes and it kind of makes you sad. Uh, but this downtown is not like that at all. Lots of, pe uh, lots of people here, lots of businesses, small businesses. That's the way you do it. You've heard me say it before. As I said earlier, it's mid-November, so you know what that means. Time to get the Christmas decorations out. <laughs> they are hard at work here downtown doing just that. Huh? <laughs> Got a snowman being maneuvered into place. Anyway, uh, some stats about the town as I walk through. The poverty rate is 15.3, a little higher than the national average of 11.4. The average age of the people living here is 35 years old even. The average household income is 67,600, pretty close to the national average. And the average home value here is 166,300. Which means uh, their home values here are less than half of what they are across the U.S. as an average. So they've got good income and uh, low cost of living. I mean, if you're making close to $70,000 a year on average, your household, and you can get a house for $160,000, $170,000, that's pretty killer. That's really good. Anyway, uh, I'm going to have to warm up a bit because it is cold. So I'm going to jump in the car and uh, go check out those grain elevators. They are actually on the National Register. So I want to see them up close. And I want to show them to you guys. So that's coming up next. And I'm over here right now. Uh, big train yard here. Woo, it's loud. And I uh, got some massive grain elevators over here. I'm going to drive closer to them and show them to you. Yeah, when you drive by them, you really see the scale. This is just one of several. I'm just going to hold the camera here and let you get a good look. Uh, let's see. This is elevator A and B, it says. Let's go in there and get a closer look. Yeah, they are big, aren't they? Let's see if I can get the camera in place. You can really see it. They are huge, aren't they? How cool, huh? Uh, this one across, that one might not be operating. Huh. Oh! Not the best road I've ever driven on. That's cool, isn't it? Massive structure. 
I don't know if the camera's uh, really giving you a feeling of how big these things are. There's another one over there. Awesome. Uh, you can see the trucks just pull up. Uh, the one there that just left. They pull up to that, I don't know what you call it, a spout, I guess. Let me zoom in a little. Yeah, they just pull up there and fill up. Now here's a truck that just got loaded up, leaving. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty interesting. First time I've ever seen that. You see, you got trucks lining up behind, waiting their turn. That's another truck leaving that's loaded up. Look at that. I'm glad I got to see this. Uh, we got another huge couple of elevators here. I'm just kind of driving in. <laughs> they may run me off. We'll see. I'll get as close as I can. I tell you what though, I think it's... Ooh, this road's rough. I think it is fantastic that these are on the National Register. Uh, they're mostly built in the, I want to say, 1920s. But, um, yeah. This is a part of the world, or a part of the U.S. anyway, that feeds the rest of the country. Oh, my uh, mirror's getting in the way there. Cool, huh? Let's get a good look here. Elevator Z, pit five. Nice. They sure are big. I'll tell you guys what. There's the one I was just at over there. Giving you one more look before I head to my next part of the town I'm going to explore. Yeah. Trains, grain elevators. Really interesting. I mean to me, what can I say? You guys who follow me for a while know I love interesting structures. Usually architecture. I looked up the architectural style of these uh, grain elevators, by the way, and it just said, grain elevator. <laughs> so I guess uh, they have their own architectural style. Clearly they do, they all look just like this. Some of these smaller town videos that you've seen of mine, they got real small elevators on, in virtually every town. You see it in Kansas and here in Oklahoma. Uh, these are massive here though. Cool. Well, I'm going to head to uh, my next place. I'm in a neighborhood near the grain elevators, and it's pretty close to downtown. You can see uh, tallest buildings right there, uh, but you can tell this very old uh, area of the city. Uh, looks like some of the infrastructure has not been kept up. Uh, you can see the roads. I'm going to cruise through here and show you a little bit of this part of town.
you can see that a lot of the city sprung up, uh, sprung up around the elevators a hundred years ago. Um, and uh, it's very old. Man, I'm always fascinated when I uh, see a house with so much stuff. <laughs> it's like they can't throw anything away. I'll show you a little bit more before I head to the next place. A little small blue house. I think this one next door is empty. Well, I'm getting, making my way back into town. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna head to the next destination. Well, I haven't really talked yet about how Enid came to be. Well, the answer is really quickly. Enid was uh, a part of what they call the Cherokee land strip. It was the fourth Oklahoma land run. It was the busiest, the largest. Uh, in 1893, this whole area was nothing but fields and farmland. Well, not farmland because it wasn't being farmed yet, but it was just wide open country. Uh, the Oklahoma land run, the fourth one, like I said, occurred that year and this area went from a population of zero to 10,000 in one day. They've got like a little village here. Um, this is the Cherokee Land Strip Heritage Center. It's a museum. I'm not going to go in but it's here for you if you were ever to visit and it tells the story of the land run here in Oklahoma and uh, how Enid came to be pretty quickly in one day. Well, I'm just exploring downtown or the area around it a little bit. And I see they have a train museum. Yeah, it's pretty cool looking. I don't have time to go in there, but I'm just kind of cheating a look. Yeah, they got a bunch of uh, cabooses. Bunch of trains back there. Railroad Museum of Oklahoma. Cool. Well, if you're ever in Enid, that might be something to see. Well, they got some interesting old homes on this side of downtown. Uh, this one right here is for sale. It's just screaming restore me, isn't it? I mean, you can see a beautiful house there. Just needs to be fixed up. There's quite a few beautiful houses in this neighborhood. Uh, they got some over here. They look really awesome. That one's beautiful. These are huge. Wow. I'm a, a bit west of downtown and I ran across this neighborhood. Uh, the architecture is fascinating. I'm not sure what you call it. But, uh, like all the houses here look like this. Uh, European Dutch, maybe? Somebody can uh, fill in if they like. Man, I love the way these houses look.
Yeah, and this whole area, the, you know, it's this style of architecture. So clearly it was planned. It's really, <laughs> really interesting. Another street down, more of the same. These are even, even bigger and more beautiful. Look at that house. Yeah, you can see on the other side, more of that. Really interesting homes over here. Another street of them. See the sloping roofs? Wow. See the roof slopes almost to the ground, some of these. Beautiful homes. There's like streets of them here. This is kind of a surprise. I wouldn't expect to see something like this in Enid, Oklahoma. This amazing architecture. That's cool. Well, I'm back in downtown Enid. Uh, I really like this downtown. It's really, really, really nice. Anyway, we're gonna go to a local place, the Enid Brewing Company. It's in an old Masonic temple building. Uh, looks like it was built in the year 1900. So, uh, yeah. Looking forward to that. Wife is already inside because she just can't hack the cold. So, we're going to give it a shot. See what it's like here. Uh, they've got a spot for a live band. It's probably hopping on the weekend. It's early afternoon though, so we're here by ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can see the, the brewer back there making some beer. Yeah, we're having a late lunch. Uh, anyway, the brewer's back there, hard at work, crafting some fresh beer. I'm having that beer that they made right here, an Oktoberfest. But you are having something not local. Ace, but what is it? it's equally yummy, or actually more yummy. It's, um, what's it called, Ace Perry? Ace Perry, anyway. All right, so we're gonna get some food, see if that's good. We ordered a pretzel for appetizer, but we've already gobbled it down. Because we were both hungry. <laughs> yeah, and I just love pretzels. Yeah. Okay, I have switched to the stout they make here in-house called Skeleton Station. I've got a classic burger, some steak fries, and you got strawberry, strawberry and almond salad, and I have chicken on top of it. And you're still having that? I went out. Yeah, I had another Perry because I found something I really liked, so I'm sticking to it. So you're having that cider, okay? Mm -hmm. With poppy seed dressing. Yeah, the poppy seed dressing is really good. It just, my favorite type of dressing is, is some kind of Italian, you know, and this tastes like Italian with poppy seeds, so. Okay, all right, well, we're gonna dig in and see if this stuff's good. Looks good. Well, the verdict on the food, I'm a traditional guy when it comes to burgers. I like just your classic burger. This one is awesome. The beef is locally sourced, never frozen, and you can tell when you eat it. Really? You can? Oh my God. I can always tell when beef's been frozen. Big difference. How's your salad? It's very yummy. Um, yeah. And I'm glad it's not huge because they usually bring me these huge salads and I'm like, I'm never going to be able to. This is like perfect size for me. The chicken's really good. The strawberry is really good. I would have preferred like bigger pieces of almonds, but they're pretty good as well. And I like the poppy seed dressing. So, yummy. Well, there you have it. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, I will be heading into rural Oklahoma for the next one. So be looking for that one. It was a good lunch, wasn't it? It was a good lunch. But, but can it, we go someplace warmer next time? Yeah, it's freezing cold here. Uh, but I anyway. I don't like the cold at all. Anyway, uh, be looking for that next video. Bye.